This podcast is not a replacement to any formal lectures or clinical placement. Hello and namaste to all. Welcome to our podcast. I'm Anisha and I'm Kavita and here we will have discussion on different clinical cases in this case series. Welcome to the case series episode 1. A 20-year-old girl with yellow with discoloration of the sclera. A 20-year-old girl presents to medical OPG because of yellow with discoloration of the sclera for one week. She has a week-long history of mild fatigue and weakness. She denies any other associated symptoms like fever, pain, or vomiting. So she is icteric plus mildly fatigued and has no other symptoms. Then what about blood loss? I would like to know about her menstrual history. Well, her menstrual history is all good, no irregularity, no excessive blood loss, and she has no history of trauma either. Okay, is there any significant past history? Yeah, she had a similar history of yellow discoloration of her sclera three years back, which lasted for a few days that dissolved itself. It means it is not the first time she is icteric, right? Is there any relevant family history? Yes, and it seems really strong. Her mother is a non-case of beta thalassemia minor. Oh, looks like the whole story lies upon this history. Okay, tell me more about her clinical findings. Sure, on physical examination there are paler and icterus only. No finding in favor of iron deficiency in adenocytes or colanchia. Her vitals are normal too, and there is no any significant finding on systemic physical examination. Okay. Iron deficiency is the most common cause of anemia and it should be considered in every patient presenting with anemia. Here, in our case, she has a family history of beta thalassemia minor and it's very likely that she got it from her mother. Patients of minor variants of beta thalassemia have unremarkable symptoms and very rarely they present with splenomegaly. The age of presentation is around 18 to 20 years. and all these things direct off towards thalassemia but let's not hurry to the diagnosis her blood works will obviously tell us the cause of her anemia yes definitely her erythrocyte count is normal but her hemoglobin concentration is only 9.8 g per deciliter leukocyte and platelet counts are normal too peripheral blood smear is also done and it shows some microcytic hypochromic rbcs so Uh, these low hemoglobin level and microcytic hypochromic red cells are responsible for her symptoms absolutely okay what are the investigations are done here is a report of liver function test the liver enzymes are normal but there is a slight increase in total bilirubin level which is 2.4 mg per deciliter as the level of direct bilirubin is normal it is mild unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia okay Jaundice becomes evident when bilirubin level rises above 2 mg per deciliter. This is the reason for her icteric sclera. Uh, she must have done her iron profile too. What does it say? Yes, she has. And it is all within the normal range. Normal iron profile? Now, we can rule out iron deficiency anemia, right? Yes, of course. Her symptoms including her complete blood count and picture of peripheral ischemia are consistent with iron deficiency anemia except for her iron profile and it and it rules out this diagnosis. You're right. Now I think it's time for hemoglobin electrophoresis. What do you think? Definitely Anisa. The hemoglobin electrophoresis shows 10% ESBA2 while the normal level is less than 3.5%. From this, we can confirm the diagnosis of beta thalassemia minor. Yes, there is a significant elevation of SBA2 to confirm it. Yes, it is. Wow, it's a really interesting case. And it's also common in our part of the world. Yes, there are many people, especially females, who are anemic and are unaware about their disease. Many of them don't even know that their fatigue is a symptom because they are used to living with this. Many people believe that it is common among men treating a man, so they don't consider it necessary to consult a physician until it is more severe. And this marks the prevalence of anemia. And that is mainly in case of minor variant of thalassemia, as here the symptoms are unremarkable. 
It is the family history that plays an important role in diagnosing patients with clinically silent thalassemia. Yes, that's right. I think we should move forward to discuss how to manage this case. Of course, Kavita. But uh, before this, let's revise some basics about thalassemia. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, thalassemia is an Im- inherited impairment of uh, hemoglobin production in which there is a partial or complete failure to synthesize a specific type of globin chain. In beta thalassemia, there is a point mutation in the short arm of chromosome 11 causing complete lack or reduced beta chain. And the homozygotes have the thalassemia major, whereas the heterozygotes have thalassemia minor. The minor variants have mild microcytic hypoglomic anemia, while the major variants have profound hypoglomic anemia, along with other skeletal deformities present very early in their life. The defective beta globin chain leads to a compensatory increase in HbA2, that is alpha 2 delta 2, and this is confirmatory. Now, uh, talking about management, as our case has a minor variant of this disease, she doesn't require any specific therapy. Uh, However, we can recommend her folate supplements. Yes, but if this was a case of thalassemia major, we would have to opt for large transfusion, or splenectomy, or even simple transplantation. Yeah, and in both cases, counseling is very much crucial. Um, okay, Kavita, tell me some important points you would not forget while counseling this young girl. Sure. First of all, she needs your parents. She does not need to worry about the disease, as it is not that severe. All she needs to do mm-hmm. is to have a healthy diet, which includes fresh fruits, vegetables, eggs, and meats. She should follow up frequently, if possible, after three months. Yes. There must be regular for lab visits. Yeah, also she should be aware about possible iron toxicity. And finally, she requires genetic counseling. It's better if her partner does not have thalassemia like her because the child mm-hmm. born out of them will likely to have major variants, which is more severe. So she should be aware of all these things. Yes, indeed. Okay, with this, we have come to the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. Goodbye and keep learning. Goodbye. Keep supporting us.